see from behind me, I'm on a boat. That's because we're going over to Newport Isle of Wight versus Verwood Town. And cheers to the guys at Verwood for inviting us. Facilities, quite a small clubhouse, but it's got the TV, it's actually got a dartboard where a couple of the Burwood uh, Town fans are on their senior pro tour. And then at the bar here, we've got Strongbow and Sam McGowan on tap today. Fortunately, there's no carling, so Matt's going to have to actually have a classy beer all day now, much to his dismay. But it's pretty good, and outside also, you've got the outside area that runs alongside the pitch, so you'll be able to see the game also whilst having a beer. And also, no, no scar on the telly or BT, but that's a good thing because Everton are away to Man City at the moment, and I don't want to know the score. <laughs> They're losing 5 0. <laughs> Steve, you're the kit man at Verwood Town. Tell us a little bit about what being a kit man entails. Uh, so, yeah, we've been doing it now for about two years or so, and it's it's mainly a thankless job. Like, the, the players obviously appreciate it, and the committee appreciate it, but your average supporter, they, they don't really care, obviously, what, what goes into it. but. It's good and it, it gets you part of the team. I never had the ability to actually be a footballer, so this is as, uh, as close as I get to, to actually being part of the squad. So that's really good. So. so it's a volunteer role. How important are volunteers to teams like Verwood Town? Oh yeah, all, all across the West Six, it's absolutely essential. Like without volunteers, no, nobody can function from like your Shaftesbury's all the way down to the bottom of this league and, and the leagues below. If you don't have volunteers, then like, it's just it's just like the, the sort of lifeblood of the club. There's people who've been here for sort of 30, 40 years and that, and they'll, they'll get accolades within the club, but the wider community don't don't see what happens. But if it stopped happening, they'd soon sort of see like the effect of them not being there. That's for sure. And as a kit man, what is the most important bit of your job on match day? Um, mainly not forgetting anything. <laughs> like, usually it's not a problem because everything I've got and I need is in my car. So if I go and I go, oh, I haven't got sock tape or I haven't got this, it's, I can just go to my car. But obviously you're on a white, you haven't got that luxury. <laughs> so since Thursday night I've been like OCD in a proper list, making sure I have everything uh, with me. And it's just knowing sizes, players' preferences, that kind of thing, but you, could, you sort of get to learn learn it, and I'd say if, if you're watching this and you fancy sort of becoming a kit man to speak to your local club, because it is, it's really good, it's a great way to integrate yourself with uh, a part of the football club and be appreciated while you do it. So, uh, That's brilliant. Thanks Steve, I'll let you get back to your uh, beverage. Cheers mate. Okay. Cheers for that. Right, Chairman of Newport Isle of Wight. Afternoon. Can you tell us a little bit about the club? about the club, where we're at at the moment. Well, we've been going since 1888. We actually celebrated our 136th birthday at our last home game. Um, so yeah, we've got a long history on the island. Been playing Wessex League now for the last 20 odd years since we came out of the Southern League. Um, very difficult to sort of maintain that standard with the travel and everything like that, going up to Banbury and Corby every midweek. Yeah. So we're probably at our level at the moment. Um, if I'm honest, we're in a complete rebuilding phase at the moment. Um, last summer was very disruptive to the club. We've had two years of heartbreak in the playoffs, not quite getting up to Wessex Prem, uncertainty over the new ground, and lost uh, quite a few players to the other clubs on the island. So we had a rebuilding job to do over in the summer when I took over. And can you tell us a little bit about the progress and the sort of story behind the new ground? It's been, like you said, a couple of years. Well, it's been more than a couple of years since the um, ground, the old ground at St George's Park was lost to the club. Um, and then the new developers took over. And what they're looking to do is put a retail park on the old site and build us a new ground just on the way out of Newport to these cows here on the race course. Um, Covid intervened, the price of raw materials then went up. Um, so there was no real rush from the retail side to get it built but obviously there's a massive rush for the club to get the new ground built 
Um, myself and the new trust chairman Steve came on board um, in June this year and basically we've moved it forward in eight months what should have been done over the last five months and that's no, no fault of anyone else from the football club side because it's a it's a big commitment your time and everything like that and it just didn't have the personnel or the group of people to be able to do that but Steve and I have been able to invest some time into it we hold regular monthly zoom meetings with South Collegia now the plans, new plans for the clubhouse have gone in from a two story oh, down to a one story. They're in with the council. And if I'm being at hand heart, what we're looking to have is the clubhouse built by the end of this year and then be playing in the new ground once it's settled in by start of season 25 26. So one more year of ground share, most probably, uh, and then have our own facilities. And the sort of ground sharing situation, how has that affected the club? I mean, obviously it's going to affect financially and yeah. sort of getting players in as well. Um, from the players' perspective, the players that are here, that they don't, they look like playing here. It's, it's good facilities, they're used to it and everything like that. There's certainly nothing wrong with when we ground share these cows, Vicks. The simple matter is you just cannot generate any income. We yeah. don't get any bar takings, we don't get any food outlet takings. We just get gate receipts, programmes, merchandise and then sponsorship. Um, so our income monthly is small, um, which means that we're unable to pay players, which we know is a situation that's going to have to change in two or three years, or we just won't have a club. And I speak to other chairmen in the league and they're in exactly the same situation. So what we have to do out is go out. We've managed to um, sell all our match day sponsors this season, all our match more sponsors. We've got mascots for every game. Um, so yes, um, and other goodwill collections that we can do or any events we had a quiz nights and things like that so we've just got to think outside the box and be proactive but the key message this season was we weren't going to be competing for playoffs mid-table will suit us fine and I think we're probably overachieving where we are at the moment but we've still only played half our season because of all the features <laughs> yeah. that have been called off so God knows where we're going to end up but 20 games in the last sort of three months is going to be challenging with suspensions and injuries but we just had to go back to community rebuild as a club community club we've got a match day photographer now who's she's a, a photography student and just things like, like that um, just get the island involved invite people to games and um, our mascots today are the, our own under 11s team and things like that and just yeah, get people to see what our match day experience is like. We haven't got a massive what we can offer, but what we can do is offer what we can well and get people to come back. Thank you very much for your time. No worries. Okay. All right. today in uncharted territory abroad the <laughs> Wessex League game first time this season isn't it catching a game over here it's actually my second trip to the island in the last six days I was actually in Ryde last Sunday doing a punishing 10 mile race so my legs are still a bit achy now to be honest but I'm not going to complain old age pretty much yeah <laughs> but yeah so today we are watching Newport versus Thurwood who are very kindly giving us two seats on their minibus today so we met them at the Red Funnel in Southampton, had a nice sailing across, and now we're here a good hour and a half for kickoff. So, what do you reckon today, then, Matt? Um, it's going to be a close game, I think. Newport currently belong in 16th place, Furwood in 15th. Uh, Newport lost 2 0 to Hamrack last week, who we vlogged up. Um, started pretty well, but then you know, struggled a little bit to get back in the game and hand with the uh, turn the screws a little bit. Yeah, but they, they kept their shape in defence and they didn't like they were they, going they to did. concede a handful of the game. Um, Leon Pittman in goal was very good. I thought he pulled off some brilliant saves in that game. Um, so Joe Butcher out wide, uh, he knows he can get goals, but you can see why, him, especially in early stages of the first yeah. half, he was getting into space, putting lots of crosses in the box. Um, unfortunately, no one connected. But, I mean, their home record was pretty good. They've um, won six, drawn two and lost four three at home, which is pretty impressive. As for Thurwood Town, their away record is also quite good. One four, drawn one, lost six. They drew one over Andover, one three one here against East Coast East Cows Victoria. Uh, lost four nil to Downton, three nil to Millbrook in their last few games. Um, question for Thurwood is replacing goals. The goals, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Um, Louis McWilliams obviously gone to home with the Aiden Shepherds at Portland. Yeah, that's a lot of firepower they lost, isn't yeah. it? And that, that makes a difference in this, this kind of league between finishing bottom half and pushing for the playoffs, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, that is the big difference, in, is, is that final third of the pitch. But they've got Harrison Whitelaw, the ex-Christchurch striker up front. He's got 3 and 11. He's pretty good on the ball. He holds it up well, plays others in. Um, Callum McHale on the wings, 5 and 11, so he's capable of getting goals. There are some players that are capable to step up and fill those roles. Yeah, excellent. So... Hopefully, we're in for a good game. The ref's not shaved today, Crow. Sure, what to say about the game apart from it's been very tight, hasn't it? Yeah, not much given either way. Goal came on about 29 minutes. Unfortunately, I missed it with an ill time toilet break, so Matt can fill us in with the goal. Um, so basically, Verwood had a chance substitute Keelan Watson, hit one for about 25 yards just wide, literally, the goal kick straight out of the pitch. Bit of confusion in the Verwood box, goalkeeper didn't come for it, defenders didn't clear, and Harry Katiana was on hand to sort of tap it home for Newport. Um, I think both teams have been relatively close um, yeah there's not been many clear-cut chances to to film at the moment but hopefully second half both teams might go for it a little bit more now especially with Verwood because they need to need to get a goal but they're just lacking that little bit up front at the moment aren't they they are I think that's the difference between the two teams you can see with Jordan Brown Harry Catiano and Joe Butcher in the front three for Newport they've played together a long time and Butcher had a chance just over the bar yeah just towards the end of the first half but I think that is the difference at the minute between the two teams Indubitably. Uh, 
Winners today, happy with the performance? Yeah, really happy today. I mean, result result is everything for us because we, we, we've been doing well lately. Quite a few missing today. Thought it was a really good performance. Um, I think that makes it what two defeats in about seven games now. Really picking yeah, up yeah, form. We, we, we have turned the corner since Christmas, really. Um, I think I said it before the game. These sort of games we'd have lost at the start of the season. We showed a lot of character today. Things going wrong, injuries and that. I like say we had a few people out today, and we had a few young lads in, and they've they've done well. They've earned their chance, and they've done well. Talking of young lads, it was the 16-year-old uh, got your winner today. Yeah, I mean, Sonny's been great for us all season. He's been, uh, he's always at training. He, he gives 100%, uh, and he's going to be a very good player. And he, I said to him before the game, the only thing you're lacking is uh, is goals. And it's great to see him get his first goal for the club today. It's a great bit of imp improvisation as well for the finish, wasn't it? Yeah, it's yeah, it's just. Um, I know, to be honest, I was, I was there thinking, well, it'd be great to win 2-1 and that's his first goal and he's got the winning goal. So, uh, here you go home, really happy today. And this is a ground-hopping vlog. What would you say to anyone that fancies catching a Newport game? I think, so today we've got a bit of uh, passion, we've got a bit of support there. It's a proper grassroots game to come and watch. Brilliant. Thank you very much for your Thank time. You very Appreciate much. it. Cheers, Congratulations. mate. Congratulations. <laughs> Full-time score was Newport 2, Verwood 1. Pretty tight game, I thought. Not a lot in it overall. Probably the main difference was that Newport's team are a bit more settled and they've got a goal score in their ranks, whereas Verwood are still probably patching up a team at the moment, aren't yeah. they? Curry got their manager up front at the moment. Did all right today. Fortunately, we missed the Verwood goal as we were um, in with the committee at half-time and we didn't expect them to score pretty much straight from the kick-off. Yeah. But we won't blame Matt too much for that. As long as you can get the footage off of the uh, media team, then we will say no more. So what are your views on the game then, Matthew? I agree with you. It's very tight. Um, I think a draw would have been a fair result, in fairness, because I think Verwood, after the second goal, were pretty much pushing for an equaliser. Didn't quite get it, but it was um, a young man, 16 years of age, um, Sonny Mypum, who scored the winning goal. Great bit of improvisation. Got his first yes. shot blocked by the defender on the floor put it into the corner. He's made um, his mum very happy as well by getting that goal. Um, so that, yeah, you can see that on YouTube. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think Verwood's pretty much after that were the main attacking force. It was just that final finish. They yeah, they didn't create too many chances, but they had a lot more of the ball second half, yeah. didn't they? Yeah, yeah. I, I think that was slightly the better team. Yeah. Um, but I think a draw would have been a fair result because... Yeah, there's not a lot in it today. No, there wasn't, wasn't a huge margin. No, but we've had a great day out, haven't we, to yeah. be honest. And, and this one of the best atmospheres I've experienced at a game yeah. in terms of crowd, isn't it? And oh, noise, wonderful. singing. Yeah, no, wonderful. You don't usually get that at this level, but great day out. 200 people here today, so can't complain. And we're very much looking forward to coming back, aren't we? When we they, are. When they get their new ground up and running as well, I think that would be a great experience. And also, I think we've got to say a massive thank you to Fairwood Town for letting us come over with them. 100%. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's been a great day. They've been very accommodating. The chairman's been great. All their staff have been great, haven't yeah. they? Yeah, wonderful. So, very much looking forward to catching Verwood again soon.
Shadow of Fun every time. Oh, fantastic.